Okay, it's Sunday here in the United States, July 14th, 2019. It may be July 15th for you, depending on where you are. <clears throat> Market is open for trading, so we're going to take a look at the uh, one-hour time frames here on the majors. This is the weekend analysis video. We're going to start off with, uh, actually, I posted a video in the, uh, the Facebook group and also in the membership area. And we talked about the IMP crown pattern setting up on the dollar yen and the dollar Swiss last week. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start with the dollar Swiss. That was one of the trades that I did. Uh, traded, uh, I traded off of the uh, C retracement back up there. I'll explain how I set this one up. And we talk about this. So this was actually an IMP crown pattern. Uh, it's uh, a head and shoulders pattern for the most part. I get in uh, very often a little bit earlier uh, if it is lining up 100%, meaning that I have no doubt in my mind that it is an IMP crown pattern that I can trade to an extension target. And uh, very often, the next move after the, the initial C entry is traded to its, specific, its specified target. After that, I get very often another opportunity to trade. When it takes out one of the key support lows, I can trade it as a continuation breakout trade to the downside for another 55 pips. So let's go ahead and review that. The um, the entry at the C level on a tech one trade is not always a 55 pip uh, trade. It depends on the distance where the nearest support low is, uh, where the candle sets up. Sorry about that. Um, I've got an alarm there, so I'll talk about that dollar uh, yen in just a moment here. So let's go ahead and talk about the setup. So we had this dollar Swiss move back here uh, from the about the middle of June to the end of June here. Uh, June 25th is that low. And, uh, and then things start to turn around and change. So usually what precedes a uh, or, or the completion, uh, one of the things that helps me, it needs to be in place before... Um, I get into the trade, but it's that technique or that strategy where I'm using that three pushes to a high. In order for me to find that three pushes to a high, and I talk about this in the membership area in great detail, how to find that, how to locate it, how to know you're actually looking at that three pushes to a high method that it's actually developing. But there are things that need to be in place in order for that structure to even uh, unfold and develop and actually confirm even when it reaches its target, even if you haven't traded it. I don't, it's, it's not something that I necessarily trade. It's something that I look for, a pattern, the three pushes to a high. And it usually starts off with the continuation breakout trades. So after the continuation breakout trades, I get these areas. Uh, I do the same thing on the larger time frame. You, you, you've probably seen it in the videos if you're already in the membership area. Uh, the videos with the larger time frames, I'm looking for those three pushes to a high. And it helps me determine these trend shifts and these directions so that I can pinpoint my entries and maybe in some cases hold on to my trades a little bit longer for my intraday trades when I'm trading off of the 30 minute or the one hour time frame. So that's what really set up that IMP crown pattern. And again, I talked about it last week and then we shorted it here on that C retracement. Uh, I got in a little bit later than I normally would, but I was able to take it to that target. The 77 was the target initially, and then I just wait for the next move. So the next move would be to wait for a daily, I'm sorry, a one hour candle here if I'm gonna trade it for day trading, right? Day trading purposes, which is going to indicate what I'm going to do. How long am I gonna hold on to the trade? What is my target? That tells me what I need to do, knowing that I'm day trading or I'm swing trading, using maybe a four hour or daily chart or even higher or something like that, looking for a different type of setup, which would require a different uh, take profit level. So again, the next key support low, I'm gonna open this up. We're gonna have to go back over here to this low here, one hour chart, dollar Swiss, that low is 98.93, 0 0.9893. And um, I'm waiting for, again, a key support low to be broken here. It is, and it did on Friday. That's where my charts closed. I noticed that some MetaTrader uh, charts actually had a different uh, configuration here with these uh, candle patterns, uh, which is common. Uh, you, not every broker is going to show you the same you know, from one to the next. Sometimes you get those discrepancies in, uh, in highs and lows and also the candle patterns, the uh, structure and the shape of some of these candle patterns will also vary. So we're waiting to see if this is going to hold here at that retracement. I'm sorry, that, that key support low here and then pull back down and give me an entry, which it, it, it likely could. But uh, again, at the same time, I can't rule out that Monday might provide a situation where it starts to just float up a little bit higher and maybe test a little bit deeper into this, uh, this previous consolidation range. 
Um, so that's how I set up Friday's trade and what I'm going to be doing or looking for this week. Now, if from this point right now where it's at, where price is, 98.43, if it just continues a little bit higher, then I'm going to be looking for a totally different setup altogether. There was some divergence when that continuation signal candle closed and printed on Friday, which is part of the reason why I didn't get into it. I'm not going to get into it and hold it through the weekend. And also, uh, something that I'm going to be well aware of, knowing that I need three points of confirmation. I need the Bollinger Bands to be separating away from each other on that signal candle. I need confirmation with the CCI. There cannot be any divergence. And the same thing with the MAC, uh, sorry, with the MACD histogram. So let's go ahead and take a look at that candle there. So when that candle closed on Friday, I'm going to go ahead and put the crosshairs here. The, uh, the Bollinger Bands were not separating away from each other as they need to be on a breakout candle like this. And there was divergence there in the CCI. Notice the actual low in the CCI was way back up here when price was on its way down and didn't even, I mean, it hadn't even closed for the week. When it finally closed and printed that break below that low, that's what it's looking like here. There's a lot of divergence here in that CCI indicator. The same thing with the MACD histogram. There's a lot of divergence here. So between these three indicators, I did not get a solid confirmed breakout trade. So that makes me very suspicious of the move. One of the things that may happen or that can happen in a situation like this, especially as, as choppy as the markets have been since the beginning of July, is that it could move sideways, create some kind of ranged bound environment here where it prints this week's low and then I have this week's high. And at that point, I would box in that range and look for a possible breakout. I'll talk about that as you know, the days move on and price continues to move around sideways. I just think this is a really suspicious move for me, the way I trade it. I'm probably going to stay away from it. I don't know what Monday is going to be like. Sometimes Mondays, and you hear me say this pretty often, it's like a typical Monday where it just goes slow. There really isn't a whole lot for me to do. Sometimes I might get one trade. Sometimes I get no trades on a Monday. So usually uh, Mondays are the slower days for me. But it, I can't rule out the possibility that we would get something that would happen over the weekend. Maybe somebody makes a comment out of the UK. Uh, you know, something happens. Maybe Donald Trump says something. Uh, we've had that happen. I mean, it happens where they say something on a Sunday, and then the market reacts to it when mark when uh, when trading opens, uh, whether it's Sunday for you or Monday wherever you live, and then we get that opportunity to trade those breakouts on a Monday. So Mondays can be busy, just not usually. That's all I'm trying to say. And and it looks right now at this point like it's one of those Mondays where it might be pretty slow. So again, I don't really have a setup here. I can see what's going on. Um, but I need confirmation. I'm not going to sell it right now, and I'm not going to go long just yet. I need more confirmation, so I'm going to leave this one alone. But I just wanted to show you those setups, those IMP crown patterns from last week. They worked out okay. They stopped at their expected take profit level. Again, this is another IMP crown pattern. Uh, this one, it, it, again, it's like a, a head and shoulders pattern, but I can get in at the C if everything prior to this setup is intact and in place and it's completed and I've confirmed it, meaning that three pushes to a high or something to that effect, whatever it is that I'm looking at, even if it's a W bottom pattern, it could be an inverted head and shoulders pattern, which would be a bullish IMP crown pattern. So this one has reached its target, again, waiting for another opportunity to uh, trade it either lower or maybe look for a bounce. Right now, I think it's the same thing as what I see on the dollar Swiss. I think it's just gonna be a little bit choppy and sideways. It might dip down a little bit lower and then pull back up again. Either way, it's going to create a new range of consolidation here on the one hour time frame. And I'm going to use that new range of consolidation, making sure that the high to the low is at least 55 pips or greater, and then look for a possible continuation breakout trade. Now, that being said, that sounds like it could be something that could take a few days to develop where you get that, that range of consolidation, letting price move around so it forms that high and that low that's appropriate that the distance that range of that consolidation so that then i could look for that one hour candle that closes outside of that range turning that into a possible continuation breakout trade but it doesn't mean that i can't trade inside of this range with maybe the tech one trade maybe a t2 pattern or an hl30 so i'll be looking for those but i'm going to do it very carefully sometimes i get an hl30 on the 30 minute time frame on one of the four majors and i leave the others alone 
and usually, and that's what I did last week. Last week there was uh, the uh, there was an HL30 on the euro dollar that looked really healthy. It confirmed 100%, but it didn't go to its expected target, and the dollar Swiss did. Dollar Swiss with that HL30 was actually part of the uh, uh, the pullback to that C retracement on the IMP crown pattern that we traded last week. So they sort of uh, blend together some of these trades where an HL30 could be the setup for the IMP crown pattern instead of a tech one trade. That's a possibility. That's what we were looking at last week. So I'm going to be watching this really carefully. I don't know if I'm going to be trading it as an HL30 off of that support, but I'll keep an eye on it. I'll, I'll, so we'll do the uh, updates. I'll post the updates in the Facebook group and in the membership area. Obviously, in the membership area, I'm going to go a little bit deeper with a lot of the analysis. So let's take a look at the dollar, uh, euro dollar. Euro dollar, I've got a new range of consolidation. It's, it, it, it's relatively small. It's not appropriate for what I would normally expect. Uh, it has been choppy. And I'm going to show you what it's doing here is it's swapping out one range of consolidation and then just going into a previous range of consolidation, which is something that when I see the markets moving like that, I see price moving that way, the structure, I'm going to be a lot more careful. And I'm going to start looking more closely at the larger time frames and the four hour chart to get my, uh, my entries. So the high here from last week was uh, 1.1285. And then I have that pullback low there on Friday, which was at 34. Uh, I'm sorry, 37. So 85 to 37, that, that's not a really big range. That's that's really close. I would expect that maybe price might move up a little bit higher and push these boundaries, the resistance. In a situation like that, where if uh, a candle closes above that resistance and it doesn't give me the three points of confirmation, which are the uh, Bollinger Bands, the CCI, and the MACD histogram on the breakout. If there's no confirmation there, it could be a head fake. And then price might move back inside of this range of consolidation. And then I would just make the adjustment to that resistance point, which would at that point widen this consolidation range to a more appropriate range that I would feel more comfortable and more confident in trading because eventually a one hour candle is going to close out of that range or possibly a, a reversal. But if I'm looking for the continuation breakout trade, eventually one is going to line up correctly and it's going to give me that full confirmation. Very often th with the uh, continuation breakout trades, they develop as a result of economic da data or which would be after the numbers are released or the anticipation of that economic data. So very often, and maybe you've seen in some of the videos that I've posted on the website, uh, for example, I've traded breakouts on the one hour time frame on Thursday night uh, California time, which would be the day before non-farm payrolls. Uh, it is something that happens because there's eno en enough, uh, uh, collectively, the market has decided based on the data, based on the analysis, that we're likely to see a certain outcome on non-farm payrolls. So that gives us that trending move. And then afterwards, when we get the news at 8.30 New York time, it just, for the most part, goes sideways. There's really nothing to do because we've already traded it. So sometimes I can get those continuation breakout trades before economic data, which again would be the anticipation of the news. And it's not just my speculation. It's in, you can see the volume levels. You can see that the market has collectively, they have enough information that uh, price is going to be a certain, uh, I'm sorry, that the outcome is going to be a certain way. Uh, the uh, the numbers which is going to direct us in that uh, the the level of that breakout so um, uh, let me go ahead and just a moment let me go ahead and uh, switch over to the uh, pound just a, yeah uh, let me go ahead and switch to the pound dollar here uh, pound dollar one hour time frame sorry I lost my train of thought there <laughs> I'm looking at, at uh, something else here so uh, the pound dollar uh, a key resistance point for me is this level right here. There's a few times that it keeps running into it. This is the one hour time frame. So the more times it uh, price level stops right at like a resistance level or stops here, uh, this is a clear range of consolidation. Now, this continued through the 4th of July holiday. This was the, four, the third, then here was the fourth, and then we had that drop. So if price closes above this resistance level, the 1.2591 area, it might print an opportunity to trade this a little bit higher. Uh, as far as whether or not it's going to be a continuation breakout trade, I'm not too sure. 
Again, when I see a continuation breakout trade, which is a one hour candle closing above or below a key support level, usually inside of a, a, a consolidation range, I need three points of confirmation. I first look at the Bollinger Bands. They need to be separating away from each other on that close completed candle, whether it's above resistance or below support. That's going to show me a sign of strength. That shows a sign of strength. I'm not going to be able to see volume levels on this currency pair, the pound dollar, but it's going to show me a sign of strength here visually looking at the Bollinger Bands and seeing that separation. If there is no separation, depending on how it looks and where it develops, it could lead to a head fake, which would mean that it might move up a little bit higher and then drop right back inside of that consolidation range. The, other, the second indicator that I look at is the CCI. There cannot be any divergence. Obviously, there's nothing to really look at at this point because we're not even looking at the uh, breakout and it's just sitting here in the middle of this range anyway. But there cannot be any divergence on a breakout. So if there was a breakout to the upside, the Bollinger Bands would want, I would need to see them separating strongly, showing a sign of strength. The CCI indicator would need to be pointing at a higher reading uh, based on the previous price swing. And then the MACD histogram. Sometimes the MACD histogram, if it's been sitting in negative territory here, you know, it'll it'll show you the indication that it could flip over to the positive side. This one's going to lag just a little bit. I use this indicator, obviously, for other uh, trade setups, but I leave it on the chart here just to save a little bit of space. But again, it does confirm, and I do need to see the uh, the possibility of uh, price, uh, the uh, MACD histogram rolling over to the positive side on that close completed candle. Sometimes I get two out of three in, uh, indicators that confirm. The first one would have to be the Bollinger Bounds. I talk about that in the membership area when I would not necessarily break that rule, but allow that one of these indicators might be a little bit divergent. Sometimes the CCI, it, depending on how, how choppy it is up here at resistance, if it's just been bouncing around before it actually closes on maybe some economic data and then takes off, the CCI will look a little bit choppy and it'll be a little divergence on that close com completed candle, but the MACD histogram won't. And then the C uh, the uh, Bollinger Bands will also show me that sign of strength, which would be the clear separation from the high and the, and the low band. Uh, they, can, they cannot be pointing in the same direction on that breakout. They've got to be pointing away from each other, which again shows that sign of strength. And then I would take it. So I would get two out of the three indicators, which would confirm, and that's okay. But again, make sure that you watch that video in the membership area to learn that particular strategy. You can't do it all the time. You can't say, well, two out of three of these indicators are confirming, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. you got to know when to actually use that setup. So right now, things are just going uh, are just moving a little bit sideways. I can see a little bit of technical resistance here. This is an old uh, downtrend here. We've got the July 3rd and July 4th uh, resistance area in here putting a little pressure on it. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Again, you can hear the, the hesitation in my voice. It It's just that it might be one of those typical Mondays. I really can't say for sure. I'd like to see. I always want to make money on every day that I sit down to trade, but I, it doesn't work that way. So again, I've got to expect that it could be one of those Mondays where things just go sideways. I don't get clear setups, but it might lead to better setups on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That is the possibility. So sometimes I just stay out if things don't line up for me according to my trading system, but that's okay. I know that with enough time and some movement with the rest of the market participating, it's going to set up some of the uh, trades that I need and the uh, price structure. So that is the four majors. We'll talk about the uh, yen crosses a little bit later in the week, and I'll drop those videos in the membership area. Uh, again, right now, I, I'm really not interested in taking any trades right now. I don't know if I'm going to get anything set up during the London session. Things might go a little bit sideways through the London session and maybe a little more activity during the New York session. Who knows? It could be, like I said, a typical Monday, or maybe we get some uh, comments or statements or some kind of uh, information that would uh, drive price a little bit further outside of these ranges, and then maybe I would get a setup.